All right, in. here we go. Bring the man of the hour in. What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? Yo, what up, y'all? How you doing? I'm doing good, man. Just chill. What's up, man? So, can I DJ now? Yo, what you say? I said, man, how, how's your night going, man? I've been seeing the vibe action all night. Yeah, man, I'm just, I'm just chilling, bro. Word, word, word. Well, right. well, I'm gonna hand it over to my man V. I love him. I like the yeah. colors, man. I like the jerseys and all that. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew he was coming on, so I had to bring that bullshit out. That's, <laughs> that's what's up, man. I appreciate it. That bullshit out. You feel me? Mm-hmm. All right, all right. You play the music, V. I. We, we gonna go get right into it. No, we getting right into it. We got the man on the we got the man on the horn, so we ain't gonna be too long. Keep him, you know what I mean. Keep oh, you can definitely you can definitely play some drip lord in the background if you want to, man. I mean, listen, <laughs> all right, I man. We go. We go all, right, we go all right, best conversations podcast, man. This is a special special episode. Got an NBA legend on here, a UConn legend, a Bulls legend. Even played down here in North Carolina with the Bobcats when they was around. I'd like to introduce y'all to the man of the hour, Ben Gordon. What's up, my brother? Not much, man. Just chilling, enjoying the company of uh, my two brothers. And, um, you know, me and Marv, I've been trying to get on here for the longest. Uh, he's been pacing with me. Um, <laughs> Absolutely. As, my, as, well, as a, a older childhood friend of mine, we go way back, you know, playing basketball on 8th Avenue Park. And um, other yeah. places are running and, um, you know, going through the same school system and uh, walking the same streets. You know, it, it was uh, just a matter of time, you know. Absolutely. Thanks. First time I walk in uh, your childhood friend, DJ V.I.'s uh, home, uh, I, see him, he, I see he has an autographed Ben Gordon jersey. And I was like, yo, how the hell you know Ben Gordon? He was like, yo, that's my man. And I was like, Go. I was like, say less, say less. Yeah, Go. man. Um, I think a lot of times because I kind of got like, I'm like a, I'm like a plant, you know, like I'm because of what I did. I kind of got, um, you know, I moved around a lot um, mm -hmm. while I was young. So a lot of the memories of the people from my hometown and when I was, you know, eighteen and under. Um, cause then after that, I was, you know, been on the road the whole time. So I will still come back and do like Ben Gordon weekend. Um, probably like my mm -hmm. first nine years in the league or something like that or five years, whatever it was. And then I got to a point where it just became like, kind of like a lot of, a lot of stress and I stopped. Um, mm -hmm. and then, so I'm looking to start like things back like that in the community, but it just got to happen organically. And, um, Kind of, I guess, like with the right people at the home. Mm -hmm. You know, it's been a long time since I've done that, right, Marv? It's been a minute. Yeah, it's been yeah, a minute. It's been yeah, a I minute. think we could all agree that, like, the community enjoyed it. And um, it was a good thing for, like, families and children to come out, enjoy, enjoy the community and the different mm -hmm. activities that we put on. So, yeah, we yeah, were so what, in that back rocket. Yeah, speak, sure. Speaking of Mount, Mount Vernon, man, um, what what was it what was it like growing up there? What what was like the uh competition level in, in Mount Vernon back then? Um, <laughs> I would say the competition was A one. Um now like getting a chance to go around the world and seeing like how other people play the game. Mm -hmm. And um seeing like how they grow up, you know, developing um like thick skin and toughness and stuff like that. Um it's very, I would say, inspiring. Mm. Even to go back and see, like, even though it hasn't changed much, it's it's nostalgic and the nostalgia is of like good memories. So um, for, me, for me, it's the memories for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, but not many people, not many people could say that. So you know, I, I um, hold that in high esteem, and you know, I'm grateful that. 
I'm um, from a place where there's such rich history, and I was able to add mm-hmm. to that. A uh, beer from Mount Vernon, and you, we all know the legends of Mount Vernon. You know, will will it be uh, Denzel right up the right up the road, or the Locks and Mary J? Uh, how, how did those people inspire you? Um, I would say Denzel directly inspired us, like with his finances. Thanks. Um, I don't know if you, that could be more inspiring. Anything more inspiring than that? Um, especially, uh, you know, from an academic and athletic standpoint. Mm-hmm. Um, we were facing my eighth grade year going into my ninth grade year, my freshman year. We were facing not having a um, basketball program. And mm-hmm. uh, from what I remember, if I remember correctly, um, Denzel um, had sent some money, I think, to the school board that allowed us to have, um, like, sports that year. So it was something that was very positive, um, and like that was a direct impact of somebody being from the town and then deciding to give back in the time of need. And um, mm-hmm. I hope that don't mind. Uh, and I and I think um, there was other people who donated and did things around the town too, but that was the one that just stuck out the most because, as like a young kid um, growing up in Mount Vernon. And like being on the broad line of the Bronx, I didn't really know um, what the Bronx high schools had in had in store. You know, like yeah. all, leaving everybody that I went to school with from you know grade K all the way up to eight. So, yo, when I already, when I already you- had like a I already had like a game plan for if we didn't have sports, but also obviously like um, my big bro, Heavy D, rest in peace. He yeah, in time. Heavy. Um, I know there's some discrepancies of where Diddy's from, but from what I know, he's from the town. Because <laughs> um, the town is so close to Harlem, so it's like if he spends a lot of time in both places, you know, whatever he claims, he claims, you know what I'm saying, for whatever reason. Um, yeah. yeah, but the list goes on and on, and I didn't really touch the basketball players yet, so it's like a very rich history. What what Thanks. what? Uh, well, well, give us some game. Like, some are, what, what are some of the basketball players that 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 we should know from from the town? Um, you should know about Isaiah Cousins. You should know about Jabari Hines. You should know about um, Sleepy Rosen, um, mm-hmm. Rashad Lewis, Rasul Saludin, um, Colin Watson. Mm-hmm. Kyle Johnson, Ramsey, um, Joe McCurdy, mm-hmm. um, Lowe's Moore, Gus mm-hmm. Williams, the McCray brothers, Scooter Rodney, mm-hmm. Earl Tatum, Sam Williams, mm-hmm. Mike Colbert, Jomo, Greg, John, John, Jason. Like, we got so many players that, like, <laughs> Cause we have the most championships in New York State history. If I, if I, last time I checked, I don't know if that's still valid or not. But I know, think so. 20, I think 20, like my team, we went twenty-eight. No, it's not right. Just like the history is so rich that I can say it just calmly. Like, mm. right. Our, boy, our boys was getting busy, man. <laughs> <laughs> they had a good. They had a good team. They had a good team. For real, for real. That niggas making wild sound effects in the back. Oh. Shoot, dude, that Cut, it's just smacking, it's just smacking, it's just falling. Put the music back on. Put the music on. Put the music on. Put the music on, please. Put the music on, please. Yeah, just don't put it down. 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 Yeah, so, um, yeah, we had a rich history and still, you know, still going. So, so Ben, when you feel like you found your game, you know what I mean. You um, you a guard, you know what I mean. Some say you know maybe an undersized guard, but you know what I mean. You still got busy though. So, when when you feel like you found your game, at what age? I, mean, I think I think when Marv used to guard me, my eyes used to light up. <laughs> <laughs> it was the cuckoo. It was yeah. the cuckoo. <laughs> 
Ben, ben used to cook me. Yeah, facts. <laughs> facts. I agree. I agree. I ain't seen y'all on the court yet. Yeah, it was different. It was different. Ben, ben would definitely, Ben would definitely cook me, man. He, um, the same park that we played in is actually named after him. So, you know, what I mean, it it, it, it rolls back full circle. Vi, what's your Vi, what's your game like? Vi, who, who who would you say your game was like back then? I don't know, man. <laughs> you know, I was trying to figure it out. But, you used to um, shoot with two hands a lot. Yeah, that too. Yeah. <laughs> but but you and, did and used to I only jump have high. one hand. You did used to jump real high in your shot though. Yeah, yeah. Facts. And like yeah. stop on the diamond yeah. shit. Yeah, I was quick. He was athletic. Yeah. But you know, I was different. I was like Professor X or some shit or Magneto. Yeah, he, was, he was definitely different, man. He was different. I mean plus and plus he was balling he was balling with people. Way older, you know what I mean. He was young. He was he was balling older guys. So that's that's the game right there. Mm. Yo, hold on. Tell him what I'm trying. To, I don't remember what age I started playing basketball at. That shit is like a mystery to me. Oh, I'm gonna say honestly, it had to be sixth grade when you was coming. To no, the I was park. playing. I was playing before that. Yeah, you were. You were, but. Like coming to the park, like running, you would just come down there and like play a little bit, like in between, like shoot in between the games, cause like, you know, the older ones had like the court. So, you know what I mean? What's his name? Um, one of the OGs told me I should just watch and observe before I started playing. Yeah, you would just you would just come and um, you know what I mean? You would just come down there and shoot in between, like. When they ran down one side, you just come shoot on one side. If they ran on the other side, you just shoot. But you really wouldn't, you really wouldn't play too much. It wasn't. I'ma say like for y'all wasn't let me. They wasn't let me play. No, they wasn't let nobody play. <laughs> they wasn't let. If somebody I was there before sixth grade, out there, you might be right though. Yeah. Sixth. Damn, so that's yeah. only about. Hey Ben, like hey Ben, we got a que we got a question from one of the uh, people in here. They want to know you versus Kimba, two two Connecticut legends, man. What? What have happened? You you and you and Kimba go one on one. That question is from Ti King. Y'all trying to get me talk crazy about my baby Kimba. <laughs> Come on, man. Look, that's it was like a cool playing. Now nah, look, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna give you a comparison. That's like playing literally, right? That's like a father playing against his son, and you don't want to mm. let him beat you because the day he beats you is over for you. You see what I'm saying? Right. Like that right. type of comparison. And I mean that, and I mean that, like with all due respect. And the only reason why I'm saying that is because he got the same birthday as my my oldest son. Oh wow! Mm. 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 My Kev, man, Kev's, AK yeah, Kev's, 24, twenty-four said Ben all day. Yeah, I I'm, believe it. I'm, I'm going. I'm going Ben too. You know, what I mean, both of y'all played. Both of y'all played in Charlotte, so I, 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 you know, I got much respect for both of y'all. You know what I mean? Um. Before we talk about your time at Connecticut, man, talk about your time in the Carolinas uh, hooping with the Bobcats, man. How, how'd you enjoy living in Charlotte, play, playing for Charlotte? Because that's, cause that's my team. Uh, it was great. It was great, especially raising the family there. Um, it was a nice, slow pace, Southern hospitality. Um, mm -hmm. Plenty of places to eat and shop and things like that. Um, plenty of green. Um, land, <laughs> um, obviously, um, and yeah, it was, it was a beautiful place. Now, like playing, it wasn't that, it wasn't that enjoyable of an experience, just because of obviously we didn't have a big team. And then, like my last year, they didn't end, you know, the way I would have liked it to. So, mm. um, but overall, I think it was good. Mm. Um, was you there at the same time? Uh, What's the other guy, the other kid from Connecticut? He was like number one overall pick, overall pick. Uh, over four? Was that the first? He was the second pick. Second pick, yeah. <laughs> was that at yeah, the same I was time? The third pick. Yeah. Okay. And with the yeah. third pick, he made the earth sick. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Right. Uh, why? Why Connecticut? Why? Why? How'd you? Uh, how'd you uh, pick Connecticut, man? Um, well, Connecticut ended up being the last school that I picked, obviously. Was you someone on a podcast? Connecticut ended up being the last last school that I picked. 
obviously, and um, it was because of the distance, the tradition, and just the vibe of um, how everything went, like, on the trip, and the time that I went of the year, you know what I'm saying? I went, like, when it was, like, springtime. Like, what the fuck It was, like, not a lot of kids up there. It was, like, when the school year was on break. I think they were on spring break. So I didn't see... Okay. What the fuck is going on? Can you stop doing that for me? Yo, stop pulling the chair. Dude. What's wrong with you? Stop. We're doing a podcast. This is an actual podcast, not a lie. Like, actually doing it. Yeah, so it's like, um... What did I say, man? Uh, you know, so you said, ask me the question again, so I can answer it. Why'd you, why'd you end up on Connecticut and, um... Oh, and yeah, that's right. Let me pick up where I left off. Um, it was uh, basically a two-hour drive from Mount Vernon. Gotcha. So that heavily weighed on um, where I wanted to go was um, the distance it would take driving. Mm -hmm. um, my top school at the time, growing up being like a Duke fan. Yeah, that's what somebody in the comments just asked. Did Duke of Carolina mm -hmm. recruit you? Was Duke. Yeah, they both recruited me heavily. I'm going to mm -hmm. tell you a story about that a little bit later on in the, in the, in the, in the cast. Mm -hmm. And then, um, but it was it was Duke 1, then, then um, Seton Hall 2, and then mm -hmm. um, my top five was Seton Hall, North Carolina, uh, Illinois, the mm -hmm. Carolina, right? Um, it was UNC Charlotte, and then it was... UConn. Mm. Good choice. Good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What What do you remember? What do you remember about that national championship run y'all went on? I just remember how comfortable <clears throat> we were. Like you know, like how confident we were that we were gonna win, and that um, we just knew we were the best team. So we had like a certain air about us that like we didn't really ne we never really thought about losing games. And then, like, when we did think about losing games, I was like, that's when we played our best. Mm. So, it almost reminded me of the year that I was in high school, my junior year, we went 28-0. Mm -hmm. And we had, like, this, like, I would say, like, confidence about us that we just knew we were going to win. And we won every game. You know, so, like, at UConn, we were going runs, especially in the tournament, obviously. That's what happened. We won all the games consecutively. And that led to a chip, so um, we just had that the swagger mm -hmm. and played with like a certain like braggadociousness that I think showed on the court. Yeah, yeah, you call one of them crazy schools where the women good and the guys good, man. That that yeah, coach culture up there is just just different, man. Um, going in, going into the draft, um, how many workouts did you do? Probably like seventeen. Word, word. Did you did you always did you kinda did you have a kinda idea of where you was gonna get drafted or where did you wanna get drafted at? Or just whoever whoever had that check? Nah, I really wanted to get drafted to the Bulls. Like once I realized they had a third pick and just the, the way the situation was for me, mm -hmm. uh, that was my number one pick. But like going into the draft, I was projected to be between seven and twelve. Mm -hmm. mm. And I ended up going three because of my workouts. Right. Like, I mm. these workouts, and I was just having, like, the best workouts ever. Like, literally. Like, in the gym. Every team I went to, it was like, oh, you know, that was the best workout we ever seen. And it became, like, a broken record. So, like, right away, in my mind, I'm like, yo, BG, like, whatever type of workouts you're doing, or, like, whatever impression you're making on these teams, they're literally – Verbatim coming up to me and saying that was the best workout we ever saw. So mm. like psychologically, you going through your workout pre-draft and this is what you're hearing. This is like super encouraging. Right. So it makes me tap into my regiment and my workout even more. You know what I'm saying? Like Marv know like how it was like just in the park. But there was a yeah. whole side of me that he didn't probably see that much because like it was alone. Like I'll go to the gym. Well, not with Lone, but, like, with Spoon or, like, mm -hmm. pretty much people that used to rebound for me and defend me. That was your assignment growing up if you was one of Ben Gordon's friends. Like, yep. get your ass bust, rebound for me, and 
send me for the workout and be there for me whenever I need you. Like, that was it. Like, <laughs> literally. And so, like, that's why a lot of these, um, like, athletes and entertainers and, like, people of, like, you know, high value in a certain field, they start to develop entourages because you literally need to create an ecosystem around you, like a bubble that, like, um, that, like, basically... Keep you grounded. No, no, no. Insulates you from, like, certain things, like certain environments yeah. or certain decisions and, and stuff like that. So that's just normal, right? Like, they say it takes a child to, uh, like, raise a village. Oh, no, it takes a village to raise a child, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, what was your first thoughts when you got to Chicago? What what, 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 what did you think? I mean, we covered... Like, man, this shit is whack because we went to Mexico <laughs> right away, and I didn't see nothing but a highway across the street from my hotel. So my first Oof. impression was it was kind of boring. But then, like, as soon as I realized, like, the downtown area was, um, you know, a few... 30, 25, 30 minutes. Mm. Mm. Um, your rookie, what, what, what's your biggest takeaway from your rookie season? Um, my biggest takeaway? I think my biggest takeaway was that rest is important. Because you, you get to a point where you kind of crash. You have to mm. figure out what your new routine is going to be. Right. You got to figure right. out if you're going to... Um, go from playing twice as many games from, you know, from college to the NBA. <laughs> so they say that rookie wall is real. Yeah, more like a... Um, in college, you play about 30, 40 games. Mm -hmm. NBA, the whole 80, 82, 81. And then preseason and then playoffs and then practice every day. Mm -hmm. So, so, so my, so, so I got a question. Since a lot of people might not know, what, why did you go with the number seven opposed to the number four? I know that I know the answer, but I mean, other people might not know that answer. Well, one, the number four was retired, Jerry mm -hmm. Sloan. Right. I and mean, then I was picked uh, third. So being picked third, uh, I wanted to incorporate that somehow, and being. Uh, at number four, all my life, I wanted to just add that number so it would always be like kind of a part of what I was doing. Gotcha. And I wore number eight, two, four in year for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. I started doing that when I was in um, Detroit. And then when I was in Charlotte, I did it. And I went back to seven. Yeah. So y'all boys, man, y'all boys with the Bulls, man, Started slow, but y'all boys started catching really a lot of steam and a lot of momentum to the point where Kobe was talking about coming and joining y'all guys, man. How disappointed was you that Kobe didn't, you know, when Kobe free agency came around, he, he you know, he almost came to y'all, but how disappointed was you that he didn't come? Um, I always say I was disappointed because I think I probably would have been involved in the trade. Mm -hmm. At the time, I had no desire really to go. I wanted him to come and like, I'll be able to stay. Me personally, I thought y'all two together, I, I was thinking like y'all two together would have been more of a, you know what I mean, like one, two, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? You you playing more on the ball, Kobe playing off the ball, like y'all two together would have been, would have been hell, man. For real, for real. Nah, mm -hmm. I agree with you for sure, you know what I'm saying, but... It was definitely a lot of pressure during that time. Like, we thought he was coming for sure. Yeah, it was we all... Like, it was, we were, like, damn, they're preparing to get traded. Yeah. All reports, he was he was coming, man. So, uh, I mean, how, how, how do you feel like things, as we close this chapter, how do you feel like the things ended with Chicago before you get to Detroit? How you... Do you feel like, you know what I mean, every... Like, you got a fair shot in Chicago? He's freezing. Yo. It's freezing on his end. Shit.